Let's talk about genetics. This is a busy chart. You see at the top, determinants of health, genetics 21%. This chart was dreamed up by some very smart researchers I met. You can see that our physical environment, which is the green slice, whether we have trees and water and fresh air or pollution and factories and no sidewalks, is about 7% of our overall health. If you look to your right, the choices you make, your lifestyle, individual behavior is the big orange tan uh, section of the pie, 38%. If you look below social circumstances, your network, your friends, your family, um, those that support you is a big chunk. Uh, genetics are the yellow, green, uh, lime green to the left, 21%. And then medical care is a rather paltry 11%. That's what's done in clinics and hospitals. So genetics are big, and that estimate was 21%. I want to point out genes and longevity of lifespan. If you look at the bottom, this was just published uh, in 2022, a review article. I'm going to read it. Aging is a complex process indicated by low energy levels, uh huh, declined physiologic activity, that's right, stress-induced loss of homeostasis, leading to the risk of diseases and mortality. Several environmental and physiologic factors contribute to the aging process. However, about 40% of human life expectancy is inherited amongst generations. Many lifespan associated genes, genetic mechanisms and pathways have been demonstrated during the last decades, end of quote. 40% of longevity may be determined how old were your parents, how old were their parents, your aunts, your uncles. And when studies are done, for example, in the blue zones, we'll talk about, it's not all lifestyle. It is common that elderly people have parents, grandparents, aunts, and uncles that were quite elderly too. If you could pick uh, parents, you would pick those in good health. My mother, God bless her, will turn 90 this year and uh, is of uh, amazing mental and pretty darn good physical capacity and wishing her 100. It's good for her. It actually turns out pretty good for me. So let's talk about practical steps about being the CEO of your own life, the CEO of your own health. Start making executive decisions about your health today. And I am a cardiologist at heart, and it has uh, if you read the slide properly, don't die of heart disease, know your arterial age. Every 40 seconds, someone in the United States has a heart attack. So maybe you're excited about CRISPR technology, or you're excited to learn more about the genetics of longevity, or you're excited about Yamanaka factors and other things I put there to tease you about the current exciting aspects of anti-aging medicine. But what about the fact that you know, you may not make it long enough to enjoy the hopeful realization of all this excitement and investment and reality because you have clogged arteries you don't know about. You have to know how old your arteries are. Who first said that? Well, a physician almost 400 years ago said that. Dr. Thomas Sidingham, the most famous physician in England uh, who was well-schooled in autopsies, said a man is as old as his arteries. And although there's a lot of different ways to measure how old you are beyond your driver's license birth date, from uh, telomeres to epigenetic age, something called the Horvath clock and other things we won't go deep into. The most practical way right now is to see a cardiologist with a clinic like mine and get a handle and knowledge on how old your arteries are. You can have a simple ultrasound. You see a picture there in the bottom of a woman with a probe lightly placed on her neck. No radiation, takes about 15 minutes. Pictures to the right show the carotid artery uh, splitting into its two branches, external and internal. And this simple, simple test can measure the thickness of the wall of the carotid artery. You can compare that to other people of your age and gender and come up with the fact I'm average in terms of this marker. Thicker arteries are sicker, thicker, sicker. Thinner is more normal, healthier. And you can get a report. I'm 54 years old and my arteries are like a 73-year-old. That's concerning. I'm 54 years old and my arteries are like a 39-year-old. <laughs> Congratulations. 
This is not an easy test to find. It's an easy test to perform. We do them in my clinic and it is easy to perform. You then have to find a reliable place to interpret them because it takes a computer. This is digital. This is called precision medicine. This is how all medicines should be practiced. No eyeball around. And if there is some plaque or bumps or atherosclerosis, you'll get a detailed report there too. So this is just an example from my clinic. If you look at December, 2016, was a 59 year old woman in this case with arteries like a 65 year old woman concerning above average. But just to tease you a bit here, she went from being 59 to age 61 because it was a couple of years later, but her thickness went down to a much more normal, in fact, to a superior level. 0.806 went down to 0.677, and her arterial age dropped below her biologic age. She's now, according to her arteries, 52 years old, not 65. That is real reversal of arterial aging. That's what happens when you change your diet, when you put fitness in your life, and when you sprinkle in some of the things I'm going to talk about. The other test that will give you your arterial age, and I consider crucial, is a coronary artery calcium CT scan. This is a radiologic study. So yes, there is a very small amount of radiation similar to what a woman might get during a mammogram. The test takes maybe 20 seconds. You lie down on a bed inside a circular CT scanner, no needle, no IV, no injection. Um, pictures are made very quickly at very low radiation and you go home without a Band-Aid, without any blood. Um, the three examples here, A, B, and C, show the breakthrough that we learned decades ago that this simple low radiation CT scan can show the heart arteries without any injection of dye. So in panel A, the yellow arrow is pointing to heart arteries that are free of calcium. Calcium is a definite sign of aging, of atherosclerosis. Panel B shows a few white spots. White is usually bone-like material. And this person has accumulated atherosclerosis they did not know about. That's aging. That's not a person aging properly. Although if they're very elderly, that still might be below average for their biologic age. And C shows the real scary factor. When you start ordering, and I've ordered probably 15,000 of these heart calcium CT scans over the years because they've been available in Michigan since 1995 or 1996. Uh, and I've been involved in this scientific effort. Some people are walking around with massive amounts of calcified heart artery panel C. They are aging. They don't need to worry about Yamanaka and CRISPR technology. They need to worry about heart uh, prognosis and risk of heart attack, stents, bypass, and death. Just out of interest, if you look at panel C in the upper right corner, that's a rib. And you can see a rib is very white from all the calcium in a bone. And then you look at the heart arteries and you can see they're even more calcified than a rib. That's very, very concerning. It's not likely this person will need a stent or bypass, but it is possible and they need the full evaluation. Does it matter if you find out what your arterial age is on calcium scoring CT scans? In my town, they cost $75. Cleveland, they're free. In Texas, they're covered by insurance. In your town, they might be $125. Just without going into too deep detail, if you get your report back and it comes back zero to 10, your chance of dying of heart disease over the next five years is very close to zero. And if you do this test and it comes back very high, like over a thousand, if you don't have diabetes, you have a considerable risk of death over five years. If you have diabetes and this high calcium score, you're older than you think you are. And we need to love on you a lot in a clinic like mine and university centers because your risk of dying is considerable, 20% in three and a half years. And we need to determine what you need from medication to surgery, to lifestyle, to prevention, to reversal. So it isn't just arterial age measured by carotid ultrasound, CIMT, and uh, heart calcium CT scoring. You need a few labs better than average. What this shows from a study in the United States called MESA, Multi-Ethnic Study of Atherosclerosis, 
um, is that occasionally the labs your doctor is doing on the routine blood work, the LDL cholesterol, aren't telling the whole story. And the red line is the key. Some people have a low LDL cholesterol, LDLC, but they, have, they can get a simple blood test called LDL particle number, LDLP, and it actually reveals that it's way out of range. This is particularly common if you carry extra weight in the body, are pre-diabetes, are diabetic, or have what's called metabolic syndrome. And you may look at that and say, well, my LDL is 97. It's under 100. The lab says that's okay. But when you do the LDL particle number, it's 2,000 instead of 1,000. So that's one example of advanced labs at a very low cost that you can ask your doctor for. Uh, the introduction was very kind and talked about my most recent book, Lipoprotein A, The Heart's Quiet Killer, uh, an important read that I would urge you to get both for the recipes and the science. Lipoprotein A is inherited in 20 to 25% of us comes on chromosome six. Maybe in the future, we'll use CRISPR technology to delete that gene and stop making it. Right now we can't. It does three very bad things in some people, not everybody. It causes inflammation. That was a theory that during uh, the pandemic, people who inherited lipoprotein A may have more inflammation from the SARS-CoV-2 virus. There's limited research, it's a theory. It causes clotting, prothrombotic clotting. Clotting is the final step in a lot of heart attacks, strokes, and death. It also was a big deal during the pandemic, as you're aware. And if you look to the left, it's proatherogenic. It leads to lesions. It leads to bumps. It leads to plaque. It leads to calcified plaque. People who've had stents and angioplasty balloons who have lipoprotein A inheritance have much more renarrowing and repeat events than those that don't. People who've had bypass surgery and inherited lipoprotein A have much more problem with their bypasses over the five to 10 years after bypass. How many doctors check this $30 blood test? Less than 1% of doctors in the United States check it because it's not on the routine cholesterol panel. You have to check the box, but it's available every hospital, every Quest, every lab corp every life extension lab, it's available. Strongly urge you to talk to your doctor about checking it on your next test. If it's elevated, you can get to an expert who deals with lipoprotein A. Even fewer people have heard of 9P21. 9P21 is a gene, it's on chromosome nine. I assume that's why it's called 9P21. We're not completely sure how it activates atherosclerosis, but if you look over to the right, it does. It was found in certain genetic uh, searches. And in some recent data, we're gaining recognition. This is a blood test, a modestly inexpensive blood test. Um, you can have a lab like Quest Lab, LabCorp, uh, certain genetic panels, 23andMe, and you can find out if you inherit it. It's actually very common to inherit 9P21 from one parent, maybe as many as 50% of us, but it's really those that inherit two from both parents, but that may be as common as 25% of us. And this is a uh, research paper just published this year, Integrated Prioritization of Causal Genes for Coronary Artery Disease. They took a population of patients with heart blockage they had a panel of blood work that had 62 genes that all had good reason to suspect these genes played a role in causing coronary artery disease. They were ranked by the power that they found in this study. And the top on the list was the location called CDKN2B, but that is the 9P21 gene the most predictive gene in this panel of 162 candidates was 9P21, precision medicine. I do 9P21 in my clinic. It is amazing how frequent it is abnormal and how frequent it is the double version abnormal. <music>